holy day and it was a church and we are so grateful for God for the life of a man of God for the wonderful message he preached today but you are welcome to living truth your number one Bible studies show and today we are here I'm here with pastor Stevie miracle as we are going to discuss important topics that will help us all because we all need to be inspired so that we can do much more for God so welcome sir Thank you very much for having me once again. Uh, yes, you're How welcome. Are you doing? I'm doing great. And I like your outfit. It's very nice. Thank you. Okay, you're so. Sweet. Thank you, sir. Okay, today um, we are going to discuss our family. And I believe that naturally we have our families that we all belong to or we come from. But today we are not talking about our earthly family. We are talking about our church family. So before I read a scripture, then we delve in it. Because today we are strictly going in Bible. So I'll read from um, 2 Samuel chapter 10, uh, 7, sorry, verse 10. It's moreover, I'll appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. I said, before I ask you scriptures pertaining to this, uh, questions pertaining to this scripture, I want you to explain church family to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you once again. Um, welcome to Living Truth. Yeah, again, to all the viewers. You know, the Bible says that God, we have family of earth and family of heaven. And the God is our father. Every family must have a father. And the Bible says that the family of both heaven and earth, we are named after God. And the Bible also called the church a household. When we read it in Ephesians, it says that we are a household. A household means that it's a family system structure. Hallelujah. So when you come to the body of Christ, God actually speaks of a family. And in Galatians 6, he said we must do good, especially to the family of believers. All right? So what is a family? A family must consist of people that have given birth and where you are giving back to, you belong to that family. So for example, in our earthly system, you have a family and I have a family. And, there is, and your family members bear the name of the father. The father's same names are put on the children because and it identifies them as a family very important point i'm noting it identifies them as a family they carry a name a same name and identify them as a family but before it become a family one person cannot be a family it took a man that married a woman gave birth to a child or children and the moment children comes in it becomes a family hallelujah and we you get to have a nuclear family and extended family where there are children grandchildren and great grandchildren and all this extension all right and the family becomes so big because the children are all giving birth elsewhere and they all meet as a family so there are family meetings so when you come to church to the same thing the body of Christ, for example, it can even have a denomination where there is a pastor and other pastors and souls that we have won and they all come in and become one big family. And there's a generalized big family, which is the larger church of the whole world that belongs to Christ, that we are family. All right. So there is still a thing as a church family where we are not just an organization that meet from elsewhere to meet like club we are not a club church is a family that one belongs to it's a household all right thank you all right so i'm um, looking at the scripture it says moreover i will appoint a place for my people israel and will plant them all right so it was it that they were somewhere that they were wandering they weren't having any place to go to that the Bible says that God said, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel. All right. So when you read from Genesis to Revelation, you will see that God believes in family system. And God wants everyone to be planted in a family. So you 
Abraham had a family. And you have the 12 tribes of Israel. And it was a family. And every tribe was named after the man. All right? And it became a family that extended to become a clan to a whole tribe. So God wants his people to always to have a um, place of belonging. They have to belong something. You have to belong somewhere. God didn't create man to be isolated or to be a wanderer without a family. So God wants each one to be a family. So so is, 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 is Christians too. We bring them, like you said, and God plants them in a family. And therefore, God can plant some people in a certain family. Uh, they have a name, and we call it Methodist. God can plant some in a family that they may have a name, HSGM. God can plant other group of people. And the reason why God does is that God wants people to belong to family. Where they can receive instructions. And you place there, you place leadership, you place heads which is the head pastor becomes the head of that family. All right? Like in your family, your father is the head. And so God plays certain things and you, you put in a structure of family, even in a church. Because the Bible says God is not an altar of confusion, rather a God of order. So God believes in order. And that is why he institutes a family and he plant and place people in a family. So everyone must be planted in a family. And there's, the, there's this error that I want to bring in. There are people, they, they, don't, they don't belong anywhere. Uh, we have a term, they call, them, they call them church prostitutes. They don't have a belonging to serve in a, in a place so that they can be very effective. So every Sunday in a church, they, they, they go to. This week they go to this church. Next week they, went to, they go to this other place. The following week they go you are a wanderer. You don't have a place of belonging. And you cannot receive. And you cannot be known anywhere. Because. There's rights of a family. There are inheritance in a family. There are support systems. That are in a family. Where my uncle can help me. That uncle. You may not have the right. To call him for help. You will call your uncle elsewhere. So they are all rights. The support system in the family. So is a church. When you belong and you are planted in one, you receive this support system, this help system, both spiritually, physically, financially, job connections, and so on and so forth. And that is what God wants every individual that calls his name, calls himself a Christian, to have a place of belonging. You must be planted in a place and function there effectively. You must be. Planted, you must have a local church where you belong. Even when you travel and you come back, you go there because it's your local family, it's your local church. Do you understand? So everyone must must belong to a family, otherwise, you become a bastard, Christian bastard, <laughs> or church prostitute. Okay, so um, let me continue and I'll ask from the BC is that that they may dwell in the place of their own and right. move no more. Wow. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before. So the scripture has said that they will be planted, which will enable them not to move any longer. But we can see movements from people. Is it that they, they, don't, um, they don't understand or they don't even know the family be, they belong to or sometimes they want to just wander and explore because we are sometimes we used to say, I want to explore. You know, such errors are only found in Christians and among Christians. Hallelujah. It's because of a lack of knowledge. You know, the scripture you read said that they will be planted in a place of their own and move no more. So God wants people to be planted and move no more. All right? But there are a lot of reasons and a lot of factors that make these people think they have a reason to move. And but those factors happen in their earthly family, but they don't move. For example, um, if I belong to a family, I cannot say that my junior sister offended me, so I have resigned from my family. <laughs> 
or my auntie offended me or said something that I didn't like. So I'm no longer a part of that family. I do not or I do not belong to that family. It's an error. It's an error. And those people don't even do in their earthly families. But it becomes prevalent in Christendom. One because of many factors. Many factors. Open our eyes to that factor. It can be um conflict within that they they could not solve. It can be pride, it can be envy, it can be offense. You know, one day Jesus told the message and the disciples were offended and they all left. And he remained with the twelve. He asked them, Will you also leave? He said, No, to where? You have the words of life. All right. So there are people that have not settled. And God wants you to settle. God wants each believer to settle somewhere. God wants you to settle somewhere. Because when you settle, you enjoy the blessings and you function effectively for the promotion of that family, for the growth of that family, for the expansion of that family, and for mutual support of that family. All right? So it's important that people settle and settle in their family. And um, does it mean that so if I don't settle, what will happen to me? Maybe, for instance, I keep moving with even the uh, factors that she gave that someone offended me. So let me change my name. And I, I understand you perfectly. It doesn't happen in our earthly family. But we just a little thing, it happens and they keep on moving. What happens to those people? Because it's like they are sheep that are scattered and they don't have a shepherd. Correct. Powerful point. Hallelujah. What happens to those people is that, like I said, you will never get the support system that are in the family. Every family, there are support system. And it is God that created it. Bible says that Abraham helped Lot. Abraham Lot helped Lot because Lot was his nephew. All right. So there are support systems that are in the family. And Bible says that Lot was blessed because of Abraham. When Jacob was running away from his brother Esau, you know, he took his brother's blessing and Esau was looking for him to kill him. Where did he go? He went to his uncle, Laban. Laban was his uncle. So his uncle received him and he worked there. And in fact, he got his wives even from his uncle's daughters, or the two wives. So there are certain support systems that that person will not get because of his movement. And the movement that he is going, he is not set in one place, so no other family knows you to belong there. So you went here, you went here, you went there. You are not settled in one place. So uh, every family wants to look at their, at their children first. <laughs> Even Jesus, when the woman was looking for some kind of healing, he said, you know, it's for the, he said, the, the bread is for the children. It's for the children. Healing is for the children. It's children's bread. But the woman has to convince that even the dogs eat from the crumbs. So when you don't belong to a family, you become a dog, and you will rather be eating from the crumbs after the children are done eating. Hallelujah. Because every family shares inheritance to members of the family first. Hallelujah. Before the crumbs can go elsewhere. And the Bible even supports that. You know, charity begins at home. The Bible said in Galatians, Chapter 7, verse 10, he said, we should give to all, especially other verses are first important to the family of believers. So, other ones get the crops. Hallelujah. So, when a person is not settled, there are certain benefits you will not receive. Number two, you will not receive a father's instruction. You will not receive a father's instruction. And number three, you become disorganized because you have never known or settle in an organized place. You know, when you settle, you get familiar to that every institution is organized. So if you are never settled and you grow up and you want to set up a family, your, fa your natural biological family will be wayward. There will not be any organized. There are families that are organized and there are families that are not organized. Anyone do their thing, anyone go their way, you know. But there is an organized family where there are periodical meetings, all right? And so when you don't have this family, it will affect you naturally. Hallelujah. 
Can I tell you something? Paul was an apostle who travels a lot, but he had a family belong. Whenever he was he's done with the with his mission, he come back to Antioch, his local church, and will share testimonies of what God did with his ministry. Alright? So every evangelist must even have a local family. When you listen to Ran Bonke, after he has traveled all around Africa, he comes back, he goes, he fellowship with the local church. So you must have or you must have a, a place of belonging. Otherwise you become wayward or you become like Cain, what God said about Cain. Cain will be a wanderer. Hallelujah. And God doesn't want his children to be a wanderer. God wants his children to belong to a family, to share in the inheritance of the family. Israel was a family and they had the heads so that you can enjoy all the blessings that are supposed to be in the family. And can I add this? There are also family blessings okay. that when you belong to a family, you get it. Okay. God had blessed uh, um, when this man wanted to die, when Moses was about to die in, in, in the tournament at the tree, he called all the tribes of Israel and blessed them each. He called on Asher, he called on Joseph, he blessed each tribe. Each tribe was a family. So as long as you are born in that tribe, that blessing is over you automatically. We have something called generational blessing. Most of our preachers so much emphasize only on generational cases. But they don't emphasize on generational blessing where Noah blessed Japheth that God extend the territory of Japheth and blessed Shem and said, May Canaan be the servant of Shem. And Abraham came from the root of Shem that Noah has blessed. And therefore, Abraham had to possess the land of Canaan because Noah said, Canaan will be servant to Shem. Hallelujah. So they were part of a generational blessing. And when you belong to a family, they're blessing that upon that family will come upon you. That is why you see that there is a family, they succeed. They succeed. And as a family, they try, they struggle to succeed. Not because of anything. There is a blessing that was speaking to the father. That was spoken on the life of the father that has descended upon the children. Hallelujah. And spiritual things are like that. And another man also blessed all the tribes of Israel, Jacob, when he went to before you was about to die, he blessed other tribes of Israel because they were his children. Hallelujah. And he declared blessings upon them. So, each one that you declared blessing, it affected their generation. It affected their generation. He spoke about Judah. He said, to you, your brothers will praise. And he said, the scepter will not depart from Judah. And Jesus came from Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, David was a king from Judah because the man proclaimed and said, kingdom rulership the king the leadership will come from judah hallelujah so when you belong to a family the blessing and the grace that is on that church automatically it will be upon you and in every church there are, there are levels of graces and god has, so if 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 that church people are not dying as long as you are there you will not die you don't have any appointment with death because of the blessing because of the, the blessing and the grace that god has given to that church so they, they don't bury people. There's a long life there. Alright? And as long as you belong to that family, you enter and you say that I've registered my name. I'm a member. I stay there. I belong there. The blessing come upon you automatically because you are a member of that family. And the blessing is upon you. Okay, so um, finally, even in the church, let's take we have families also in the church. Like we have the technical family because they are all Men, family yeah. department. And so you can still see people wondering, today I'm in technical, tomorrow I'm in ushering, today I'm this, and they are not really stable, so your final words to them. Of course, there are people they want to explore. Let me um, make it this way. There are people they want to find um, a place where they will find some. Maybe someone told them they should join ushering, but inside them, they feel like they can be very effective at qua. Okay. All right? So... For that, they have the chance to try. Okay. But after you have tried, you must settle in one. You cannot be wandering every week for one year. <laughs> that you are in this department. Because there are blessings, like I said, there are also departmental structure. Mm. There are dues. They pay in departmental department. There are visitations that your department will visit you if, if there is a problem or there is still in church. They will do it because you belong to their department. All right? 
there are certain celebrations. Your department people come and support you. Maybe you belong to the choir family and you are doing something at your workplace. You are graduating in your school. Even though the old church will come, but you will have a greater support system from that department. They can bring you a citation just because you belong there. So you have access to the blessing. You have access to the to the gifts. You have access to the celebration and the honor they will give you. But if you do not settle in one, and that is why um, if you are not in any group in a church, those people, they complain that nobody visited them when this and this and that. But if you belong, at least your departmental leader would have known and would have made it known to everyone in that department. And you would have received that kind of support or encouragement or the visitation that you need from that group that you belong. So it's important that you belong to a family. It's important that you belong to a church group, the department, and settle there and stay and function until you grow. Uh, and maybe the pastor wants you to be in elsewhere or start a branch or be in a department. Oh, thank you so much. And for it's so important. And God doesn't believe in prematurely. Yeah. You cannot leave a family on your own. <laughs> you will have to. Be. No, it, it, it's, it's funny. Yeah. If you work in a place, mm. before you leave, you have to write resignation yes. letter. Um, so, uh, can you live without making the people no. aware? It means you are not really a part of a family. Uh, it, it's really popular in churches that you could see that uh, someone uh, will just leave. Without any notice, any it's wrong. Pain. It's wrong. Yeah. It's wrong. Hallelujah. Amen. And it should be corrected. Yeah. It should be corrected. There are proper ways. You know, you want to be an organized person yeah. yourself. So you have to understand that organization was brought by God. Mm. This family system was brought by God, mm. and it's not an evil thing. God is a God of order. Mm. So you must follow the order and the due processes, so that um, if it is agreeable for the church, they can do a nice send off party mm. for you. And bless you. Alright? So that when you go, you go with blessing. That's what most people go with cases. And mm. they come back or call and say that things are not working. Mm. They didn't live the right way. Mm. They didn't live the right way. And if you don't live the right way, your father can curse you. Alright. Thank you so much. I would have loved us to continue, but our time is up and Thank you so much for the great wisdom. Me, myself, I've been blessed. And I hope you also watching out there, you have been greatly blessed. We thank our man of God for the insight that he has given to us. So thank you so much for being part of this journey today. And we are hoping to see you next week. So keep on watching Living Truth and your life will never this be the same. You know the truth and this truth will set you free. Thank you so much. And we say we love you. Until then, bye.